And now it's time for Madison's Mad Facts with your host, Madison Standish. Hey, everybody. It's Madison. Welcome to another Madison on the Air bonus feature of Madison's Mad Facts, where we look at the way things were in real life back during these old-timey radio shows. This month, being October, we released our Halloween episode, an adaptation of Dracula by Bram Stoker. So for this Madison's Mad Facts, I thought it would be fun to talk about what Halloween was like during the time of these old radio dramas from the 1930s through the early 1950s. With me to chat about Halloweens of yore is Steve Jun, the voice of the orderly Swales in our adaptation of Dracula. Hey, Steve. What's up? I'm doing good, Madison. Thank you. Yeah, You ready to talk about some spooky stuff? Always. I'm definitely a Halloween all year long type of person. So let's set the scene for Halloween in the 1930s with a little background of what celebrations were like leading up to the 1930s. Well, in America in the late 1800s, like early 1900s, Halloween was considered a night for pranksters. So while kids were still dressing up in, you know, costumes and filling up on treats, the biggest event of the night was pulling pranks. Halloween was referred to as a mischief night or devil's night when it was expected that boys would destroy property or vandalize buildings, you know. It was considered harmless and the boys were allowed to get away with anything and everything this one night of the year. Just boys? For the prank part of it, yeah. Halloween was definitely considered a boys will be boys kind of a night. In general, the girls did not participate in these pranks. So what changed in the 1930s? The Great Depression, actually. With unprecedented job loss and poverty at levels never before seen in the United States, the pranks generated by these young boys were no longer something to laugh off. Like imagine being someone who's barely able to put food on the table for you and your family, and then having pranksters come and destroy your property and your stuff. Now the activities were a major hardship, and not, you know, just a simple forgivable prank. Tell us about Black Halloween. Black Halloween refers to the Halloween night of 1933, named after Black Tuesday the day of the 1929 stock market crash. Now, communities were outraged when hundreds of boys created incredible levels of destruction and vandalism, like they flipped over cars, stole iron gates, and other large pieces of property, and even attacked public services by sawing telephone poles in half and pulling them down. Douche nozzles. Yeah, after that night, many people pushed to ban Halloween altogether. But you know, instead... As a way to try and corral these out-of-control boys, the next year, communities created the first haunted houses. No way. The first haunted houses were from the 30s? Yeah, it's totally true. Local communities sponsored a variety of Halloween events to keep all of the pranksters busy and, you know, having fun. Some turned actual houses into haunted houses. Others took public spaces like outdoor footpaths and made them into trails of terror, you know, kind of like the horror mazes we have today. Totes cool. Both were a huge hit. The idea spread like wildfire and destruction and vandalism across the country saw a major drop. Now let's jump ahead to the 1940s and World War II Halloween celebrations. Well, while the Great Depression saw people struggling for household income, the early 1940s with the war on fronts literally across the globe, rationing was a daily necessity for Americans. One of the first items hit hard by rationing Uh, due to the Japanese taking control of the South Pacific, was sugar. So candy and other treats were in limited supply and considered a luxury item. In answer to this, recipes for non-sugary treats were promoted in newspapers and magazines. Uh, This was the introduction of, uh, for example, popcorn balls as a traditional Halloween treat. OMG, I can't even imagine reducing my sugar intake. It's pretty much the crux of my diet. And besides rationing food, this was also a time following Pearl Harbor in 1941 when American communities were canceling large public events for fear of bombing raids. So traditional Halloween costume parades and parties were being canceled. Smaller house parties, however, were still allowed as a way to try and keep, you know, some semblance of normalcy during this wartime. Local movie theaters took the opportunity to hold Halloween events full of activities which would conclude with a variety of popular monster movies of the time. Okay, let's focus on costumes. What did people wear for Halloween back then? Uh, With supplies in short demand, and this was true in the 30s as well, the majority of the costumes were handmade from items already found at home, you know? So the popular costume choices for kids back then are still the staples we see today, you know, like animals, pirates, ghosts, witches, clowns, the classics. 
But during the World War II era, uh, we also saw a rise in patriotic costumes. So we saw stuff like Uncle Sam, Red Cross nurses, and camouflage commandos. So how did things change then after the war? We get our sugar back? Oh, absolutely. In fact, with supplies and manufacturing returning to normal, by the Halloween of 1947, candy companies were creating huge campaigns to promote candy as the essential part of Halloween. However, the war had actually all but put an end to trick-or-treating. What? I can't even imagine a Halloween without trick-or-treating! Well, during the war, going around knocking on your neighbor's door was actually considered an affront to the war effort. You know, because your neighbor could be trying to sleep before going back to work in the factory that was building, you know, much-needed supplies for our troops overseas. So what brought trick-or-treating back? Oh, you could thank Charlie Brown and Donald Duck for that. (laughs) Uh, Explain, please. In 1951, Charles Schultz put out a series of peanut comic strips, and then they syndicated in newspapers all across the country of Charlie Brown and, you know, the Peanuts gang dressing up as ghosts and going trick-or-treating for Halloween. And then the following year, 1952, Disney released uh, Donald Duck, like an eight-minute short featuring Donald's nephews, the Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and they arrive at uh, Uncle Donald's house dressed up in costumes, trick-or-treating, but instead of candy... Donald tricks them and puts firecrackers in their bags, and then the boys team up with the character, uh, the Witch Hazel, to get back at him. And then from 1952 on, trick-or-treating just kind of stuck, and then Halloween continued to grow into what we know it as today. That is until the quarantine Halloween of 2020, but that discussion is for another day. Well, Steve, thank you so much for talking with us about the Halloweens of the 30s through the early 50s. Well, thank you so much for having me. (laughs) I had a great time. Uh, Hopefully see you at Halloween. You got a good costume? Well, I thought I'd go as a slutty COVID-19 virus. You know, because it gets around. I'd do a southern accent and be called Delta Variant. But since I'm apparently still going to be stuck in these old-timey radio shows, the joke is lost, so I don't know. Which, maybe? (laughs) Thanks, you guys, for listening to our little bonus feature of Madison's Mad Facts. And get ready for new episodes of Madison on the Air to premiere the first of every month.